Where are we going again? We're going to John Redmond Lake Reservoir. And the key doesn't work. <laughs> Might not be going anywhere. <laughs> it doesn't work at all. Oh, is that the, which one's? Oh, that one. Oh, that this one should, should be, work. Yeah, that's the one it's that should work. Got the Pocono Raceway on it. Oh, because that's the wrong van. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's over here. <laughs> this is the van that that key worked for, and the door's open. So you've been playing disc golf since 1995. 95, so a long time. Yeah. But when did, like, course design become something that you were, like, became interested in, I guess? Um, you know, probably when we put the Jones East course in, uh, that would have been in, like, t uh, 2002, probably. Uh, back then is when uh, we, we put the Jones East course in, and it was a little too easy. Uh, then they, the, the parks department came in and did some work to the property. They took out a pond, they took out some trees, and really made the course way too easy. Uh, but gave me the green light to go ahead and, and uh, make the course a little more difficult. And in that process, I, I revamped the whole course. Uh, and I think it was then that I really found a passion for it and really enjoyed it. You know, there's a few things I, I, I think. Um, what I like to add to a course is, is you know, every every designer kind of has their their insignia, so to speak, on the course somewhere, and and uh, I like to believe that mine is is fair courses. Um, if I had a, a blank design or, or a blank canvas, and someone came in and said, "You do whatever you want to do to this piece of property," uh, my dream property would probably be. Uh, you know, rolling hills, lots of woods, um, open fairways as well, kind of a good mixture of holes, and uh, uh, a fair course, really, long tee pads, short tee pads, so it can be a championship level course, but it can also be a beginner friendly course as well, so you're not uh, discouraging people from coming out and playing disc golf. Things that are vital to, to any course design, um, you know, I think it kind of depends on, on what you want out of the design. If you're wanting uh, the more championship level course, then it, it's vital to have good quality tee pads, good quality baskets. Tee signs are a must on, on any course. Um, good signage goes a long way in my opinion. Um, uh, another thing that really helps out with the, with the bigger, more championship level courses is par fours and fives, legit par fours and fives. And uh, if you're talking about just a basic backyard style of course or park style course that's, that's kind of new to a, a new community of disc golf, then uh, you want to have fair holes. You don't want to discourage people from, from coming out their first time and playing a hole that that they're either going to lose a disc on or, or be super frustrated with. So, you know, it, it's finding a good balance. The importance of a mat to me is very key in the course design. Uh, I like to have a nice overhead map of Google Earth of the area. Uh, right now we're working with this area right in through here and what I'll do is I'll condense it, blow it up and uh, have a better idea of the property that I'm actually working with. I know it's cold out here but uh, to be honest with you winter time is probably the best time to come scout an area for a course. Uh, it's easier to walk through the woods, get through areas and it's a lot easier to take the trees out as well. So when you come out to a property, do you just start with hole one and go from there? Or how do you how do you start? Uh, typically, when walking a piece of property, um, finding hole number one can be a challenge. Uh, a place like this is a little different because we already have an established parking lot with restrooms and facilities. So naturally, I'm going to want to start the course by that and finish by that. But when you have a big open piece of land with no parking lot no amenities, nothing yet, then it becomes a little bit more of a challenge to find out where you want to start and stop the course. All right, so right here we're in the thickest point of the woods probably. Um, 
You can kind of see just sporadic trees with a lot of underbrush that goes through it. Uh, after we come through and take out a lot of the underbrush, it'll give you a better idea of, uh, of a hole that could potentially be in this area. A great way to do it is when you're looking through the woods is actually look up and you'll be able to see, especially the winter time when all the leaves are gone, you'll be able to see the more established trees, the larger trees that you don't want to remove. And then you can get an idea of the smaller ones that you can take out. And a good rule of thumb for me on my courses is if you could fit your hand around it, it shouldn't be on the course. It shouldn't be in the fairway and it absolutely should not be on the green. Uh, I'm seeing a, a pretty good wide open field with some sporadic trees here and there. Um, some decent elevation. I don't know if you can really tell from the camera or not, but it's a pretty good uh, right to left downhill up here. Nice thick tree line on the left side. Uh, some sporadic trees here and there on the other side. Some tall grass. Uh, it could be all mowed out, mowed some fairways out, and you could even utilize the tall grasses out of bounds if you want, or you can just get rid of it all. Um, seems like this course is going to be, just from what I've seen so far, uh, it's got the potential to have the wood shots, the open holes. Uh, the open holes tend to be probably a little bit longer, seems like out here. Uh, you've got room to work, you've got a lot of acreage out here, and uh, could be a really big championship tough course if that's what they really are looking for. See anything over here? Yeah. So to the normal person I guess just coming out and looking this doesn't look like much if you kind of look off in this area. It just looks like a bunch of thick woods and shrubbery and whatnot. But all of this stuff, like we mentioned earlier, can all just come out. It's an invasive species that comes all the way up through. And if we plow through the majority of this on the side of this dam, we could have a pretty cool hole coming through here. If, like I said, when you look up, you kind of see the bigger trees in the area. After you clear out all the underbrush, you have a pretty cool fairway going along this dam with trouble on the right, pond, the pond trouble on the right, and then you've got the drop off on the left. Uh, so yeah, seems like a pretty good area for a hole to me. If we look down this way here, you can kind of see a natural fairway almost. You've got a couple tall pines on the left and on the right, right through this gap here. You got trees on the right side, you got trees on the left side. Mow down all the grass and get rid of all the smaller trees here in the middle. And it makes for a really nice fairway there. An area like this where there's a lot of trees, it's not really dense wood. They're not smaller trees. There's a lot of larger trees to come through. Uh, sometimes the best way to do it is just kind of come through, look at the area, and try to find natural fairways that you can kind of see without removing a lot of the larger trees. You may have to remove a couple bigger trees here and there on the course, but I'd prefer not to remove as many as we can unless there's just a natural perfect fairway with a couple in the way that we need to get out. It's perfectly fine. But, uh, but an area like this, where you can see all these big trees, you can already kind of see in between these two guys right here, kind of a natural fairway. It's going to be really hard for you to see it on film. But uh, I can visualize a nice fairway going right through here without having to remove any of the larger trees. Overall, this area that we've kind of been walking around in, I am really excited about. There's a lot of trees, dense trees, uh, larger trees that, that you don't need to remove that are going to make great obstacles on the course and it's kind of it's going to be kind of cool to the area because there's not a lot of that around uh, around Kansas you don't have a whole lot of the wooded courses so uh, this is going to be a gym one mile I mean come on
There we go. Uh, hey, 